Hello everyone, welcome back to the video. Today I'd like to check whether um, with what a lot of people have asked is true is that the new Hobby King Turnergy graphene batteries can deliver such a punch because they are actually of a higher capacity than what is stated so they say they're not actually 1.3 um, amp hours, they're actually more. So what I've got here is a Turnergy Nanotech 1300 4S. I've got the graphene um, 1300 4S. Obviously this is a 65C discharge. This is um, meant to be quite high as well, which but it isn't that good. I don't know what it is, doesn't really matter either. And then for one last comparison, I've got a Zippy Compact 35C 1300 4S battery. Um, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to discharge them to a certain level, both of them and then I'm going to charge them up again because what we're doing was we're comparing voltages so once it's at a certain voltage you would expect that when you bring it back up to full and then you would expect the amount of capacity to go and once it reaches 4.2 volts or full voltage um, level that you would see how much you actually put back in so let's do that now first of all what I've, the setup here is, this is a dual charger, it charges two at once, this is a balance board but only with one battery connected on each one. This one's connected on the right hand side, this one's connected on the left hand side. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to set this to 1300 milliamp hours and I'm going to set this to discharge. This one here, I'm going to do the same thing, set this to 1300. Discharge. And this one says the cell voltage is too high. Ah, there we go. Discharge. And off it goes. So they're both starting off at the same level at. Um, they're both discharging now. This one's set to a much higher discharge rate. Let me drop that down to 3 amps to be the same. There we go, they're both 3 amps. Here you can watch them both discharging. So I'll let this run for a while and I will come back once they're both fully discharged. Alright, so this is discharging now, bringing it down to 3.2 um, volts per cell, which is really as low as you should go with LiPo batteries anyway. And what I'm going to do is a little trick on the other side. I'm going to actually discharge each cell individually to get exactly 3.2 volts for each cell. Um, I'll do that with a small adapter to the balance lead, which I'll show you now. Okay, so how does this work? You essentially tell the charger that you've only got one cell and you do that by making a little lead like this and then you plug into each cell individually so if you look here so this is negative this is positive now these things work where the outer one the red one will be the positive and that just indicates that the first one will be the negative one and it turns in the case of these graphenes. Um, in other batteries it's different but it normally starts with the black one, ends with the red one and you can tell what's what. So now I go here to the charger, I tell it I've got one cell and now I do the same discharging procedure and I'll e discharge each cell individually. So there we go, it's cut off 3.12. Good. Now we move it to the next cell keeping the polarity the same as the next cell Discharge. There you go. 3.19. Go to the next one. Discharge. There we go. 3.19. Go to the next one. Discharge. There we go. So essentially, we have quite a good uh, steady voltage over all of these cells in this battery now. We just have to wait for our other battery to catch up now. After our little folly from earlier. It'll be a little while, but not too long. 
I won't record all of it again, but I will show you when it's done. All right, so we finally have our batteries in the state of ready. This guy here is the 1.3 um, amp hour nanotech from Tenergy. And I'm gonna show you the voltage measured with a proper meter, not just the charger. So empty 12.97 volts. So this one, the 1300 or 1 1.3 amp hour graphene from Turnergy, the Nanotech, the Turnergy graphene 12.93. So 0.4 of a volt difference. Um, it's 0 0.04 volts difference. It's not gonna make much of a difference. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna charge each of them in turn. So let's do that now. So if they are the same capacity, then the same amount of milliamp hours should go into both of them, bring them both up to 1.42 uh, volts per cell. So on the left hand side, as before, is the graphene. On the right hand side, here is the nanotech. So let's just put this Four volts, four cells, 1300, charge at 1 1.3 uh, amps, so it's 1C essentially. Let's make sure, so the charge end voltage, this is just, I had it set so that I could just get it balanced for the test. So the charge end 4.2 volts per cell, good. Number one is the same, so charge end 4.2 per cell and it is a four cell 1300 lipo lipo so let's go all right here's a better view with the longer lens so you can see the values um, as they are charging so just to recall the left is the graphene and the right is the Tenergy Nanotech, both 1300s. Um, uh, they've been going for about one minute and 45 now. They're both charging at 1.3 amps. The voltage um, is the one being put into the battery at this point. It's not the one that's obviously currently in the battery. Um, what's interesting is that the charger shows you a measured internal resistance. And if you've seen Bruce Simpson's review recently on the uh, graphene batteries you'll notice that he was talking about the internal resistance and the fact that it's so much lower is why they are able to provide so much more punch and to be able to provide the voltage at um, until the battery is basically empty um, and here the even though these may not be correct it gives you an indication of the difference in the batteries granted the nanotech is a little bit older but still um, the resistance here is 12.9 milliohms and the resistance in the nanotech is 33.2 milliohms which is an interesting difference um, you know it's it's double nearly double so that may mean something may not but as we see now they've both got about the same amount of milliamp hours in them if you go into each one you can see the balancing status here this is the um, graphene 3.61 volts here yeah, it's 3.63, it's about the same. So if you'd like to see a charging graph, very pretty. Here's another charging graph. Wow, doesn't really show much. This will be much more important for us. So we will see at the end of this, what we're gonna get out of it is that the time it took to charge them, of course, and the amount of milliamp hours which were put back into the cells to get them both to an end voltage of three point, sorry, 4.2 volts per cell. Um, and yes, I'm gonna just let this run now. Come back later. All right, so tomorrow 
is today the thing charged and I want to show you the results. It's quite conclusive. This is um, on the right hand side, this is the, uh, the nanotech and you can see 1304 milliamp hours, 16.8 volts, cut off, all the batteries are, all the cells are nicely at 14.2 volts and if you look at the graphene battery, 1327 milliamp hours, so what 23 milliamp 24 milliamp hours extra i would say that's not enough to say that you are over specking this battery i'd say that is a real 13 um, 100 milliamp hour battery 14.2 volts you can see it there this is this battery here um so i'm happy i think they do use a new technology i think it's a good technology and i recommend these batteries because they are quite cheap and they are they deliver one hell of a punch. The only thing is that they are a lot heavier for whatever reason. One of the reasons is if you look here at the reflection, you can see you can clearly see the cells. One, two, three, four. That line there and that line there. That's that's um, fiberglass, which protects them. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. You decide. But uh, that's the video. Thanks very much. Bye.